Good morning. Welcome to the Brown Memorial Baptist Church service. Our scripture today is found in Philippians 4, starting at verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, again, we have come first to say thank you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for letting us arise this morning to be in our right mind and that we could walk around, taste, touch, smell, see, and hear. And we thank you for these blessings. And dear God, we would ask your blessing upon this service today that we may speak to hearts and save souls. Please bless the Brown Memorial Church family and those that are listening today. If there's any bereavement, if there's any sickness, if there's concern, we would ask you to bless this person to stay, dear God. We would ask you to bless our past in a special way. Continue to lead, guide, and direct our path. Bless the Brown Memorial Church family and all those that are listening today again, dear God. We thank you for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning. Please join on with us wherever you are and sing this song with us this morning. Love lifted me. Amen. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore.
The responsive reading for today is found in Psalms 23. Shall we start? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thou rod and thou stand with comfort. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Together, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God is blessed.
We want everybody to still wear their masks uh, during this uh, pandemic, and it's better to be safe uh, than anything else. My friends, this morning, as we have just celebrated another July 4th, I'd like to direct your attention to the Old Testament book of First Kings. The Old Testament book, book of First Kings, uh, the 19th chapter. And in the 19th chapter, we're going to start reading from verse 3. And we'll read to verse 11 from the New International Version of the Bible. First Kings, chapter 19, verses 3 through 11. It says, Elijah was afraid. And he ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servants there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I've had enough of this, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, then he lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left. And now they're trying to kill me, too. Verse 11 says, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for it is about to pass by. Amen. Merciful God, we're thankful for this worship moment. We ask that you would bless the sermon. Bless your preacher. We ask, oh God, for those who have tuned in, logged on, that their time would not be wasted, that their spirits would be inspired and blessed. And we ask, oh God, that you bless all churches, even right now, as we continue to preach your word in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to ask the question for just the next few moments. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? With everything that is presently going on around us, we find ourselves at another situation, another station in our lives where our faith in God has become challenged once again. We can recognize theologically and otherwise that a specific challenge can and will either break your faith or a challenge can substantiate your faith. And you probably already know that it is needless for me to say that this is one of those moments in human history. I'm not one of those type of preachers that believe that once you give your life to God, everything will be rosy, rich, and right. There are some preachers who give an idyllic and unrealistic view of what having a relationship through God and Jesus is all about. There are some that believe that if you have problems to deal with, that either you did something wrong in your life or either you're not praying hard enough or you don't go to church or you're not obedient. But some of you will quickly recognize and identify with the fact that even when you are obedient to God, even if you do go to church and even if you have a sense of service to humanity due to the overwhelming grace of God, you'll still be challenged and you have been challenged. You'll still be confronted with dilemmas and dire situations. And if that's not enough on top of all of that, while you're going through your challenges right now, you'll ultimately have to ask the question when this challenge is over. Will I be the same person when this challenge is over? Will I be the same? Will I be better or bitter? Will I become wretched or more resilient? 
Well, I'll be frightful or more friendly. And you can also take that ante and raise it up a notch. And what will come, what will become of your family? And what will become of groups that you're attached to right now? Will your family turn out more loving or more loathing? Will you become more closer or more chaotic? Will your church become useful or useless? Will your church become more relevant? Or more unreliable? Will your business expand or be expelled? After this triple decker sandwich with the ingredients of a pandemic, pandemonium, and protest, will things ever go back to being the same how they used to be? After so much death, disease, and demonic behavior, after so much rise in racist rhetoric, after increased gun violence and hasting stray bullets killing innocent teenagers up in the Bronx who just graduated from high school, just because there's a pandemic and protest doesn't mean you have to go out shooting people in public, which lets us know that there are some people in this world who are always looking for every excuse to do their dirt. And to act the way that they act. And even as we're about to just celebrating another 4th of July, we don't know whether the noises that we heard last week came from fireworks or firearms. There's complex confusion all around us, and there's a complex confusion all over the place. This was a case for Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19 to the extent that regardless that he was called to prophesy and preach the word of God, he instead found himself hiding in a cave. You, you know already the story of Elijah. The reason that he was in the cave in the first place, you would have to go back and read chapter 18 and then read all of chapter 19 in its entirety to make notice that Elijah found himself on the run. He was on the run because he confronted King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. They were in charge, yet they were bullies at the same time. King Ahab and Jezebel bullied people and stole from the same people that they were responsible protecting. And if they were confronted, they had no hesitation of killing you if you went against their wishes. Elijah had confronted them on their wayward ways, and as a result... Ahab's paid prophets, who were nothing more than yes men, were all killed by Elijah. So now when Ahab's wife Jezebel heard the news, she sent the word to Elijah saying that by this time tomorrow that you will be a dead man. Elijah then ran for his life and ended up so tired that he took a nap under a juniper tree then an angel of God bought him some food because he had to keep going and can I tell you in life when you have to keep going God will mysteriously bring you something to give power and nourishment to your soul so that you can keep going to the next assignment that God has set for you so now in verse 6 we already read it it says that Elijah ate the food and laid down again he ate the food and laid down again. Elijah must have been a brother because as soon as he was finished eating, he laid down and he just didn't lay down. He laid down in the shade for the proof that there was ample black presence in the Bible. But then... The angel comes back with more food because God still had work for Elijah to do. Not only did God send him food one time, but God sent him food two times. And that's just how our God is. Even when we're weak, even when we're sluggish, and even when we find ourselves in our somber moments, God will send what we need, not just one time, but however many times we need God to send it. God made one bowl turn into a buffet he made one serving become two servings he made one helping turn into more helpings and the more we help others is the more he'll help us the more we bless others is the more he'll bless us the more we serve others is the more he blesses us do you know what it says in the bible it says i've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg for bread because of his graciousness you needed god not 
not only to send you something at one time, but you needed God to send you resources over and over again. Have I got a witness? And that's not called a mystery, my friends. That's called mercy. That's not called luck. That's called his loving kindness. That's not called a coincidence, but that's based on his providence. So Elijah gets enough strength to get up. And then after he gets up, he walks for 40 days and 40 nights towards Mount Horeb. And at Mount Horeb, he finds this cave. He takes refuge in the cave, but he's still scared and he's still upset. He's scared because on one hand, he knows that King Ahab and Jezebel have a contract out on his life. And he's upset because he feels like he's doing all of this by himself. And that's when in verse 8, God directly speaks to Elijah asking him Elijah what are you doing here God ultimately wanted him to go to Damascus and bless Hazael to become the next king but instead Elijah was hiding in a cave but you really can't blame Elijah if you know the whole story for going into the cave in the first place because he was scared and he was tired if you were scared and tired you probably go into a cave too he was scared and tired and sometimes in our lives when we're either scared or tired when we're frustrated when we're frightened in our lives when we're sick when we're worn out when we're beat down when we feel feel defeated, deflated, demeaned, depleted, dissected, dejected, rejected. Sometimes when you're laid off, let go, last hired and first fired, you'll find yourself trying to find the closest cave that you can find refuge in. And that is when God specializes in speaking to our spirits in the midst of our complex chaos and in the midst of our confounding confusion. God asks Elijah, what are you doing here? We can always find an excuse of trying to circumvent our divinely appointed purpose, but thank God that he is not only a God who is a redeemer, but he uh, He is a God that gives us reminders. In fact, sometimes God is not just a redeemer, but all the time he is a reminder. God is both. He is the reigning redeemer, and at the same time he's the righteous reminder. He redeemed you when he reminded reminded you of what you were meant to do in your life. He redeemed you when he reminded you that you're bigger than the circumstances that surround you. He redeemed you when he reminded you that he didn't give you all that he gave you for you to just throw it away. He redeemed you and he reminded you that your destiny is bigger than your duress. And he redeemed you when he reminded you that he alone is bigger than the sum of all the problems that challenge you in your life. So if you found yourself running into a cave because you were scared, tired of both, you can go to that cave, but don't stay in that cave because he has more for you and more blessings for you to encounter on the outside of that cave than on the inside of your cave. So when Elijah moved out of that cave and got closer to his God-given purpose, he in essence was pioneering his own purpose because only he could do what God had called him to do. There have been historic pioneers throughout the annals of history, but ultimately you are to be your own pioneer because those pioneers who we all have benefited from were not called to live your purpose. You have to pioneer your own purpose. You've got to run your own race. You've got to jog your own journey. You've got to walk your own walk. Crispus Attucks had a purpose to be the first one on the American side to die in the American Revolution. That was his purpose, but it wasn't your purpose. George Washington Carver, who invented all types of contraptions from sweet potatoes and peanuts, had a purpose. That was his purpose, but not your purpose. Jackie Robinson, 
who in 1947 integrated Major League Baseball, had his purpose, but that wasn't your purpose. Harriet Tubman, who took so many slaves from slavery into freedom, had a purpose of liberation. That was her purpose, but not your purpose. Barack Obama, who had become the first black person to be the president of America, had his own purpose, but that's not your purpose. And if you put God first, then you will be the first to live your own purpose. In the history of this world, no one has ever been called to do everything that God wants you to do in your life. Just like God made each and every snowflake in its own individualized, crafted design, God has made you with your own particular purpose and your own providentially produced pathway. So as yesterday, we celebrated America becoming 244 years old. Regardless of how you feel about being in America, you can bear witness to the fact that things in this nation rise up and then fall down. Things in this country come and go. One day things are in and the next thing in America, those same things are out. Presidents walk into office and due to the transfer of power, they'll either in four or eight years walk out of that same office. Policies are in style one day and then out of style the next day. Statues stand for a season and then the next season those same statues are taken down to the ground. Flags are raised up for a time but thank you Jesus I'm talking about Mississippi. Those same flags are casted down but I'm so glad this morning that I serve a risen savior whose policies have always remained intact. Jesus's policy says love thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy might and then love your neighbor as yourself. I'm so glad that I have a redeemer whose power has stayed the same after he got up from the grave with all power in his hands. I'm so glad that I have a messiah whose statutes and laws have been raised up never to be taken down again. I'm so glad I have a Jesus whose blood-stained banner flag signifies that he died for me, that he set me free, that he put himself in my place. In America, things change, but Jesus is the same yesterday, the same now, and the same forever. In his name, and because of his name, we give him all the praise as citizens of his kingdom, which shall reign forever and ever. Amen. We're going to open the doors of the church as we celebrate the true freedom that is found through God and Jesus Christ. If there's somebody who has logged on, and if you'd like to become a member of the Brown Memorial Baptist Church, we invite you to visit our website once again, brownmemorialbaptist.org, or you can just call us at the church, 718 638 6121. After this, we're going to take up our collection and then we're going to say one quick word about the times that we're living in. We're going to continue this worship by the giving of our gifts. We're reminded that, that even during this season when we have not been collectively in worship together and we're looking forward to soon coming back in we don't know the date but we will uh, keep you abreast of all the information we're not able to be here together but we also can through responsible stewardship give our tithes and our offerings we're going to raise up the offering right now remembering that the ministries of the church still go on and must still continue may god bless you for your generosity throughout the years for the seasons the days the months that you have been attached to the brown memorial baptist church lastly just a word of observation for all those who are still logged on this is a very trying uh tense time i've noticed throughout my uh, travels here and there a lot of people are on edge a lot of people are 
understandably anxious. I would just caution you, and part of my prayer is that in the midst of all this anxiety, because we're in a season that we've never seen before, and your anxiety is very well understood, but through prayer, through meditation, through exercise, and through your relationship with God through Jesus, I would pray for you that the outcome would not allow your anxieties and your emotions to get the best of you. Do the best that you can, but don't get so caught up that you're so tense all the time because God will work things out as God has always worked things out in our lives. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we ask that you would bless those who are still with us online. We're thankful for even during this moment that we can still render your word. We ask that at this crucial time, when there's sickness, when there's confusion, when there's protests, we appreciate protests, but we ask, oh God, that you would keep us safe from all hurt and harm and danger from violent protests, that you would bless us not only as a church, not only as a group of churches, not only as a city and a state, but bless us as a nation. America has seen tense times in the past, but every time these situations happen, we get better and every round we go higher and higher. So now, God, we ask that you would bless us, that your presence and power would keep us, and that the love and the spirit of the Holy Ghost will redeem us and keep us in the palm of your hand forever. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. me through.